What is up, guys? And we're back with another video. And today, guys, we're going to be stripping down, well, working on stripping down my low CLST and cleaning it and going over it, doing some maintenance. Um, this thing's going to be down for a little bit, so I figured might as well bring it down here in the workshop. I got the WPL right here. And, uh, you know, give it a nice clean and everything. Just go over everything. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this, and I also started cleaning already. I did some of the fuel tank and everything, but I'm going to strip it down, take the arms off and everything. But um, basically, the motor is kind of hurt a little bit. I took it apart. Um, our guess, me and my father's guess, was uh, when I tried to run it on 30%, um, I was saying it's either going to blow or go fast, and it didn't either. Um, the motor still runs and everything as well as power, but it has trouble starting up. I'm always fiddling with it and it just doesn't seem to run right. And especially it doesn't want an idle. So, um, we took apart the motor and there's a couple things here and there, but we're thinking I ran too hot of a glow plug while I was doing the 30% and it, the um, motor pre detonated. I noticed that. The glow plug blew out, but there's no specs on the glow plug, so I thought it was going to write. So I kept on running it, just put a colder glow plug in there, and it was just running. It always ran weird after that. Um, it still had all of its power, but it was just weird. So took it apart. There's a couple of issues. So I'm up in the air what I'm going to do with it, but um, we'll figure out. We'll figure that out in the future. Like I said, winter's coming. I'm probably going to put this thing in storage for the winter. That's why I got the WPL for the whole reason is we got the crawlers for the winter. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. Can't wait for that. And so that's where the nitros are going to get put away. Um, I'm three and a half gallons through that motor. Um, and, you know, it looks to be in good shape. Um, but I'm up in the air whether I should rebuild that motor or take a crack at rebuilding this motor. This is the motor that my uncle gave me. It's a Mach 1 26. Same motor that my orange one, the one that I blew up, but this one's in better condition. All it needs is a rod, so we'll see. We'll see what I'm going to do. It's very cheap to rebuild the 28. After all, the EG.28. After all, it is a um, SH motor. I don't know if it's a I think it's a clone, but it is a very good clone, if that. So all the parts are the same as a Dynamite.28. So, yeah. So I recommend getting the the eg28 because it's 70 bucks and it's literally the same motor with actually i think it looks better because it has a um black cooling head on it um instead of getting the uh dynabite which is like 120 dollars, so you're saving a lot so um yeah let's just get on to stripping this down so first off i'm going to take off the wheels and boom guys just like that we got the tires off um one thing i did notice is that i was kind of weary about this but Right front wheel, the pin sheared, and this got moved in. So look at that, melted the whole thing. This got melted. So luckily, I think this will be all right. I have spare ones. I have an extra spare one of these, and um, I have a bunch of these uh, with the and I have the right correct pins instead of these little tiny ones that I had in there. So um, I'm either considering doing that, or I have a whole new set of knuckles that LST two. And um, I have all the hubs and everything to do it. So I can do LST2 hubs in the front, convert it back, and I can make some spacers for these to work, use these LST1 arms on there. Um, I need to look into that because that's the only set that we have. And my dad's car runs LST2 uh, hubs. So we only have two spares. So um, I'll consider that once I put this thing back together. Either I'll convert it or I'll just put the stuff that I have in there already and just use up the LST1 stuff until that stuff breaks because we're not going to really be using that for much anything else. Every other three, all of the three corners look fine. It's just kind of a pain getting this tire off because uh, everything, just the drivetrain is moving but not the wheel. So, and the wheel is staying stationary when I was trying to unscrew this nuts. So, um, yeah, we'll figure that out. Uh, next, we're going to be removing the um, fuel tank and a center transmission thinking about doing so uh, let's do that really quick all right guys so just using push down hard on that make sure you don't strip out these bolts 
And I already took this fuel tank off and cleaned it, but I didn't do a good job. And that was before I was like, all right, I'm just going to freaking take the whole thing apart and clean it and make it brand new. Um, the reason why I did this, I was going to do this, I was going to planning on doing this um, during the winter. Hold on one second. But I was just waiting for the right chance to, and now that the motor needs to be rebuilt, um, I think this will be a good uh, time to do it. Uh, because this thing is not running as of now. Hold on, guys. Let me find the right bits really quick. All right, yeah, I just got another screw in here for now. I uh, probably should swap that back to a different screw. But this should just come out now. Um, so, yeah, this fuel tank is not that dirty, and it's very clean inside, actually. In fact, I don't run, uh, I see, I don't run fuel tanks on, I mean, I'm fuel filters on my tanks, even though they don't have an inline fuel filter. Not saying that you shouldn't too, but from my experience, um, the only fuel, fuel filters, the ones that I've had in here, when I had one in here, it clogged up the line and there's air bubbles leaking in. And I had one on my RS4, it was giving me issues too, it was air bubbles in the, in the line. Um, so I got rid of them and it's fine. Um, you know, I haven't had any issues with sand going through the fuel lines. Um, or anything like that. Neither has my father. So the only fuel filter that we run um, on my dad's Afna is the not the clunker ones, but the um in uh the fuel filter inside the actual uh tank. So yeah, this tank's actually really big for uh, nitro. These are one of the bigger tanks. Um, still though, I only get like 15 minutes per tank of runtime with this big block, but uh, it's pretty big for a um. Uh, RC car like this size. Uh, I don't know the exact specs. It might be like 200 cc's or something. I don't know. But anyways, it's a lot bigger than your standard conventional fuel tank. But um, yeah, so we got the tank off. Now let's just pull off the center transmission. How we're going to do that is you just come from the bottom. Super simple. And there's actually holes where you need to get into the screws on this side. Um, so that you can access the screws that holds the whole uh, mount in. Oh, look, here's the other bit that I was looking for. Ha, I thought I left that in the garage. And then there is, let's see, one right here. There's a notch right here to get that out. And then there's a hole right here. There's one right here as well. So that's super nice that you don't have to remove the bottom plate to get that out. They already thought of that for you. This truck, believe it or not, is actually very easy to work on. And in a way, it's all set up. Um... It's just, it's very simple and very easy to, easy layout. Unlike the Savage, I feel the Savage, I worked on one before and they're pain in the ass. Just to remove the motor, you gotta like do all this crazy stuff. To remove the motor on me, it's four bolts underneath. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's get start working on uh, removing this right here. That's one. Number two. Three. Number four. Forgot about one more screw right here. Ooh, this one's tight. I don't want to strip it out. Heat time. Oh, this this is way, way too tight. I guess is we're going to have to resort to this method. Because cutting a slot in this is not going to work. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I didn't even use Loctite on this. I don't know why it's so tight. Alright, we drilled through. Let's hope it didn't wreck anything. Ooh, looks like I'm not getting out that. No worries, it doesn't really do much to be honest. Um, this are, I mean, the threads are through there, so it's holding all this together still anyways, so. That's okay. No worries, we gotta screw up here anyways. It's not doing much. There we go, much better. A little bit of play in there. Not going to fix it because it's not an issue. Pro tip number two. All of the hardware that came off your, um, uh, came off your, you know, thing. <laughs> I can't speak. All the hardware that came off the part that you were taking apart, uh, screw it back in so you don't lose it. Uh, good idea. 
Anyways, gross. Look how crusty it is in here. That's disgusting. All right. Um, game plan. Uh, game plan. Game plan. All right. We're gonna take these arms off. Leave the hubs in so we can clean these individually. And uh, maybe the shock towers off, possibly. Let's remove this battery really quick, and uh, kind of go from there. All right, guys. Center transmissions off. Fuel tanks off. Motors off, get the battery out, and clean it. Oh no, take the arms off. Keep on forgetting to do that. Nice. Pro tip, guys. Um, if you're having your Allen key like this, and you're trying to grab onto here, you don't have enough leverage, take the uh, end of your T-wrench, put it in the hole, and now you got spare extra leverage right here. Just make sure that you press it down nice and hard so you don't strip out the bolts, but... Uh, yeah, learned that yesterday from my dad. <laughs> um, on bigger stuff with bigger Allen keys, you can use a um, the um, not the crescent end of the wrench, but the uh, whole entire round end on the, of the wrench. But um, for little stuff, this works better. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, we're just gonna start at the back, uh, most dirtiest point. Get this plate off. This slide right out, no problem. And get this wing out the way. Pull this off. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Come on, you can do it. Get out of there. There we go. Yes. Pull this metal plate out. There we go, it's out. Plastic plate's out. Now, um, now that this is zip tied on here, it's a little difficult. Uh, that's just the way we have it. Now everything should just slide right out. You can pull the whole entire rear diff out and the arms. I already serviced the rear diff a while ago. I put new oil in there. Um, everything's good back there. So I don't have to take that apart. In fact, I'm not even taking the front out because it still works fine. Get these retainers out right here. Hold the diff in place. Kind of just kind of like a sandwich design, but it's very easy to take the diffs out and they just literally come on. A little bit of force. Yes, it's out. Come on. Get it. Here we go. Diff is out. We're going to clean the case. Buttery smooth, as always. Look, even CV is in a straight line. That's awesome. That's how nice the LST is made. I believe it or not, I think this will actually, if you want an upgrade for your T-Max, I think these will fit in there. And they're a lot stronger than the T-Max differentials. So we got these out of the way. Now we just have to pull these pins out. One, number two, three. That was a pain in the butt. This fourth one's also gonna be a pain in the butt because the bumper's in the way and I'm too lazy to take it off. Number four, get the shocks off, sway bar off, and these are out. Finally removed the Spectrum sticker that I put on there when I had the Spectrum radio, but I upgraded to a Fly Sky radio, so only be right to take this off. Rest in peace. Um, now time to get this back plate off. We'll finish it. Pro tip number three. Never ever bring your RC car, if you don't want to get rusty, to the beach. Even though you're not going to run it on the beach and you're just going camping, but you left it in your dad's pickup truck uh, overnight, even with the top on top of it and all the moisture in the air, you got it, your RC rusty. So, yeah. Don't bring your RC car to the beach if, you're not, if, you, want, if you don't want to get it rusty. Luckily, it's just a little bit of surface rust and doesn't affect anything for me, but um, I was a little upset when that happened. Front diff out. Got to take the shocks off. Diff makes a little bit of noise. Uh, I don't think it's a big deal. It's a front diff, so it's not really under a lot of stress. Uh, if it breaks, it breaks. I'm just going to run it. I don't care. It works fine. All right, get these arms off, and then we're ready to go clean this thing. Ooh, these are tight. Come on, get out. Oh, wait, I'm tightening them. Oops. <laughs> get in there. All four arms are out. Gassing is out. Transmission's out. Shock tires can wait. Let's clean the chassis. Let's clean all this up first, and then we'll work on the chassis next. Alright guys, let's talk about today's sponsor, Raid. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is the subscribe button, just uh, down below. Please hit it.
I'm desperate. All right, guys, I'm in my garage. Um, you know, I rush here. Um, I mixed up my cleaning solution. I don't have a lot left, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Simple green WD-40. Uh, scrub this thing down. Sorry, the lighting is absolutely terrible in my garage. It is pouring rain outside, so I uh, can't even open up the door, and it's dark out. So I'm going to clean these up, and I'm going to show you guys uh, basically before and after. So before, it's already pretty clean. Before, dirt and stuff like that all around here. Before, 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 and going to be after. And guys, just remember, a squirt of PV Blaster a day keeps the crunchy bearings away. These are all crunchy and everything, and I was kind of scared. A little squirt in there, let them sit for a second, and now they're buttery smooth. There you go. Uh, quick tip, also, if you have any rust on your drive shafts or anything like that, or any rust at all, service rust, wire brush cleans it up real good. Only thing is, is that when your rust, uh, these are chrome plated, and when rust hits that, uh, when you scrap, when you use the wire brush, it does um, get rid of the chrome plating. But uh, it's okay, it's fine. Um, it does get rid of the rust. So yeah, looking a lot better. Also, aluminum using glass cleaner and some paper towels. Scrubbing it down with uh, there's the brush to get like the debris all loose, and then doing that for the aluminum. For the hubs, they're not that dirty, so I just clean them up. Plus, I don't know what I'm gonna be doing with them just yet. So now front arms are done. Are done. Uh, rear arms now. They're a little dirty, but this this way when I take it all apart and everything, it's just gonna look a lot nicer, you know. It's just gonna be cleaner, and I might spray all the plastics down with a little coat of WD just to keep them shiny. But uh, yeah, let's get on with it. And after, uh, a lot nicer. Uh, there's no more dirt on it, as if I can see. Uh, on video, you can't. There's not much of a difference, but in person, there is literally no dirt. There's just marks on it from being scratched up. Same thing with here. No more grease. No more nothing. Uh, fuel tank. I did the best I could, but um, it's this is the best it's gonna get. Uh, it's it's all right. Um, this drainage hole. Uh, there's a lot of sand in there, so. Try to unstick it, but I don't think it's going to work. So what I'm going to do, get a drill bit slightly larger than that hole eventually. And just drill through it very carefully. But that's not a big deal. Um, it's just nice to have it there so that none of the fuel, when I spill it and everything, goes everywhere. But, uh, you know, this right here, there's no absolutely no dirt on it. This is just marks. Anything that you see is marks uh, where it got scratched up or something. But there's literally no dirt on anything. Um, the rear bearings have been soaked in uh, PB Blaster. Front bearings I have to assess later. They are rubber sealed, so it won't accept a PB Blaster. These ones are metal sealed, so you know. There you go. So this is all good. Now I'll just do the diff covers and then go from there. But uh. I think we're gonna end off the video here and do make this a two part video because this video is already very long. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and see you guys in the next video. Peace.